Hey, welcome back to another Dispatch from Holly McKay. Today, we're going to be talking about education, specifically education in Afghanistan and education for women. And Holly, you wrote an article about underground schools. Right. So obviously in the news, we've sort of seen a lot over the past year or so about how the Taliban still hasn't allowed uh, secondary schools in most provinces, um, in public schools to, to go back. And there is always sort of another excuse, whether it be we don't have the uniforms right, we need to ensure private transport, we need to ensure complete segregation of boys and girls. And there just always seems to be something. And I think um, it's important to sort of keep highlighting the importance of, of girls' education. Um, but at the same time, I think there is a lot of sort of... Um, hope that's being lost at the same time and so that really has forced girls to go and find solutions because they want to learn and you know it really is something that I think we here in the West take for granted um, the opportunities that we have, the sort of going to school. And and I think we can all remember from our sort of primary school days that, oh, we wanted to be sick in bed and, and nobody sort of wanted to go. And, and it was all sort of fun and games. But for Afghan girls, they really recognize the importance of education. And it's something that they just are really the ones that have already been exposed to it over the past 20 years. It's, it, it's just so, I, I can't express how important it is to them. Um, so a lot of them returning to these sort of underground schools. And I had the opportunity to visit one. I mean, it was sort of in the somebody's house um, on the edges of Carmel and, and most of the people that attended it, um, you know, they'd come from, they'd all sort of learned about it. Uh, through you know their Quran studies their religious studies and then it was just sort of a, a young university girl um, and she was in her early 20s and she actually had just been kicked out of university because um, she was in trouble for not wearing the right hijab the Taliban wanted them to wear these sort of thick dark hijabs and she was wearing a sort of lighter uh, brown hijab and she got suspended for it and made a video about being suspended for it and that video happened to go viral and be on BBC and whatnot and sort of the Taliban once they managed to find her and realize she was the one that, that sort of made this video um, expelled her from the university so since then she's really been putting all her efforts and attentions into this underground school and um, she runs it with her brother and her brother is just in his first year of university um, and they sort of take alternate days and it's sort of about she said there was about 28 girls that come and they alternate between morning classes and night classes and they pretty much just try to, to teach them everything from maths to um, geometry to physics and uh, biology um, they sort of have some English classes and so it's, it's this very sort of as comprehensive as it can be and um, it just sort of shows you that these these girls they sort of come it's it's very underground they sort of can't tell you know if people ask where they're going they say they're going to their religious studies um, but it's really sort of this opportunity for them to continue learning um, because I think that is a fear of a lot of Afghan girls is is there aren't that many opportunities for them and they sort of see education as, as their only sort of way out at some point. Hmm. Okay. So um, as you investigated uh, this uh, uh, asking around, what's the reaction of the community and, uh, and the authorities to the, these underground schools? Yeah. You know, for the most part, and this is sort of the frustrating thing, I think, Pretty much every Talib that I've talked to really over the past, um, you know, almost 18 months now, it wants girls to go to school. And, and you know, there is one particular Talib in the foreign ministry who will tell journalists, like, continue to write about this, continue to make this a big deal um, because they... They want, uh, they want girls to go to school. And of course, if you go back to the religious text, um, you know, Prophet Muhammad, that was education was important to him and his wife. So it's not something that really has a religious basis. I um, mean, certainly there are, there are more than 50 Muslim majority countries in the world and not a single one of them, except for Afghanistan, is stopping girls from going to school. So the excuse that's sort of now being used is, oh, but it's this sort of part of this traditional Pashtun um, culture and and, and that is sort of what's coming up now. But, you know, for, the, for most Talibs, this, this isn't necessarily what they want. Um, so it is a very, you know, as it's explained to me, it's this sort of 1% of the Talib that I presumably is sort of the Kandahari leadership. 
that is kind of um, being the the blocker on all of this and are sort of calling the shots. Um, and it's that sort of 1%. And, and I think the Taliban, again, it knows that this is such a, an important sticking point that will stop them from getting the recognition that they want um, so desperately from other countries to be recognised. And it's something I think that, you know, the majority of them have also learned from, you know, from their first tenure during the 1990s when, girls were banned from going to school um and it's I, I i think it's something that you know certainly regular afghans definitely don't necessarily want to see especially in the cities um the villages again are sort of a different ball game i think um their lives haven't necessarily changed as much i think in those cases, girls often stopped going to school anyway because of their own sort of conservative leanings or because their parents needed the money and so they were sort of forced into marriages. So there's a lot of factors there. But I think in, in sort of the the major cities and that's where girls are really suffering. Um, and I think most people you talk to want to see that, that girls are educated. Yeah, well, there you go. So um, any updates as far as progress on when people over there think that they will finally solve this endless series of get readies to get girls back into school will end? Unfortunately, I mean, it just seems to be a different excuse after another. Oh, it's happening. It's happening. It's happening. Well, we've been hearing that really since last August. So um, yeah, I think that we can't put a timeline on it as one Afghan sort of, but, but I will say it's not every province. So you have a lot more provinces in the North that are generally like Herat, like uh, Mazar, that are generally a lot more uh, or a lot less conservative, shall I say, generally. And so for whatever reason, the Taliban there has enabled the secondary education of girls in public schools to continue. Um, and so it's not to say it's sort of happening completely in all of the country, but yes, in the majority. I think putting a timeline on it is, is impossible to do right now. But as one Afghan sort of explained it to me, he said, once the elders have had enough, once the elders, you know, these sort of tribal leaders that aren't necessarily the Taliban, but Afghanistan is a country that very much deeply respects um, its elders. So once the elders sort of decide that they've had enough, that's when change will happen. And so, you know, we can probably argue semantics of was that yesterday? Is that next week? Is that in a year? Um, so I think, you know, sort of a lot of the, that hope for change, you know, really could lie in that sort of elder tribal community as to when they've decided um, that they're not going to sort of allow the Taliban to continue with that. Okay, well, um well, let's hope that happens soon because, I mean, you know, one would hate to think that an entire generation of women will have to wait until these elders are gone and replaced by a, a bit more progressive group of new elders. That could take decades. It um, totally could. And and again, just it really hit home for me. I went to this Hazara Education Center that had been hit by a really a terrible terrorist attack. There was a suicide bomber, there was gunmen, you know, more than 50 of these young girls and boys that were sitting, these practice university exams were killed. And it was just, it was so heartbreaking. But I, it, this was two days later and I saw these girls and, and they were all sort of lining up. The school was still closed. The Taliban was sort of inside and, and guarding the area. And these girls went with their school books and they just stood there in the, you know, in the hot sun sort of all day just begging to go inside and even though they knew um that you know school the school was still the education center was still closed they just sort of wanted to 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 show and to to be there and and there were these two young girls and they were just bawling their eyes out and begging this Taliban to let them go inside to at least collect um you know their books and things so if they couldn't go to their normal school then they could at least study at home and and they just stood there for hours just crying and begging and one Taliban finally you know had enough and said okay go in and these girls just bolted inside like their lives depended on it to get these books and and I'm sort of sitting there and just it, I think that for me really hit home just how important education was to these young girls and these young women and and that I mean it was everything to them that they were willing to sort of risk their security and and in a in a, in a time of such grief um, they were still showing up. And I think there's just 
something that we can all take away from that. Yep. Well, let's hope the elders come to some consensus soon then, because um, before these people lose hope permanently. Well, thanks, Holly. That's um, not the happiest story in the world. And um, of course, you know, the, the, there's more in the article. So people should go read that if they haven't yet. And um, there will be a link to it in, in the description for this video. So um, we'll keep watching. Thank you. Thank you.